Hello guys and welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in the previous tutorials we have taken a look of almost all of the things which would you would need as a beginner and in this tutorial I'll be teaching you something uh, which is called as a denial of service attack or uh, when done by multiple people uh, from different networks it is called as distributed denial of service attack which is very and very ha harmful and it cannot even be uh, you can say prevented at most of the times. So in this tutorial I will be teaching you denial of service attack that is DOS and distributed denial of service attacks and you don't need to be an expert in anything to go ahead and do a denial of service attack just a basic few basic things and you can do that. So to start with the first thing that I would ask you would be that what is DOS and what is uh, DDoS? What are the effects of DDoS, levels of DDoS, preventing how can we go ahead and prevent DDoS uh, but you might be wondering that I just told you that it cannot be prevented. So the thing is that it, it most likely cannot be prevented at most, of the time, most of the times if there is an attack going on then you cannot go ahead and stop it but even before the attack starts you can do something at least to, so that you could go ahead and prevent it from happening in the very beginning. And I'll show you why it is useful and why they are used in multi multinational companies. So what is DDoS exactly or what is DOS exactly to start with? So it uses uh, the fact that while a service can be more than sufficient to cater to the demands of the desired users, a drastic increase in unwelcome users can make the service go down. Most of us use the words like this website was down the other day or without any idea of what it actually means. Well, now we will know today what exactly that means. To give you a good example of what is happen happening exactly, I'll take you to two different examples. And if you still want to know what exactly or how it works exactly, then you can go ahead and check on this uh, specific uh, people. They, they are known as anonymous. So you can go ahead and search about them as to who exactly they are. And okay, so anonymous is a face uh, is a, a group uh, which uh, most people don't know of exactly who they are because they mostly consist of random people. And they call themselves as hacktivists and they normally go and DDoS a lot of networks and some of them have been caught but you cannot go ahead and actually catch all of them because they can be anyone of us, it can be you, me or anyone else. So anyone who wants to be anonymous can just go ahead wear a mask and help uh, in go, go ahead and doing an attack or anything. So they have done lots of other things. They have even done some kind of attacks on different countries as well and still they are unable, uh, people are unable to catch them. Even FBI is behind lo lots of them but uh, it's simply not possible to catch all of them. And they were the first to, uh, they were not the first to go ahead and do this attack but it's because of them that this attack became so famous that uh, people came to know about the importance of a distributed denial of service attacks because they almost do this in any kind of groups that's why. So uh, if you want further information then you can go ahead and do that, go ahead and research on them. But today I'll be giving you the basic concept of how exactly this works with two examples. First thing will be a multiplayer online game and second thing would be a bus stop. So to start with scenario one would be uh, a multiplayer online game. So now just consider you are playing an online multiplayer game. There are millions of other people who also play this game. Now there's a pool in the game over here uh, that everyone likes to visit. Now you and your friends know that they have the power of numbers. Uh, so there are a lot of you and together you make to, uh, de you together you decide to make identical characters in the game. That means uh, you look all of them, you make all of them look the similar. Then all of you go and block the access to the pool. You just carried out a denial of service attack. Yes, it's as simple as it, as it is. The users of the game have now been deprived of a service which they had obtained the right to use when they signed up for the game. And this is just what the guys at 4chan, that is the birthplace and residence of Anonymous. They did a long time ago this kind of games and this is the basic kind of thing that gives you a very basic idea of what a denial of service attacks can be. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at scenario 2. Yeah, uh, it, yeah, this is not exactly what I was trying to but I could not find any other uh, good, uh, let's say, a good image. So I took this image from out of nothing. So let's assume that this is a train stop. So now assume that due to some reason you want to disrupt the train service of your city and stop the people from using the service. To stop uh, the legitimate people from utilizing the service, you can call your friends to unnecessarily use it. Basically, you can invite millions, invite millions of friends to come and crowd around all the uh, train stops and take the trains without any purpose. 
practically it is not feasible since you don't have millions of friends and they are not definitely going to waste their time and money riding aimlessly from one place to another just for the sake that you want to go ahead and block people from using it but this is how it works in the uh, digital world so while this may seem impossible in the real world in the virtual world you can cause as much load as a thousand or even a million users alone at the click of a button there are many tools out there for this purpose however you're not recommended to use them as a dos or on some uh, one else as it is illegal and it is very easy to detect uh, since it also all, uh, easily shows your IP address from where these packets are coming. So we will come back to this later on and do a DOS on our own computer. But as of now, I'll show you how this works exactly. And just before I go ahead and close this uh, basic tutorial part, I'd like to show you uh, the most famous tool which we use for uh, attacking and hacking and that is called as uh, LOIC. And I'll just take you to the Wikipedia page as well. I'll just open the Wikipedia page. Not on your offline page. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So as you can see, this LOIC is known as Low Orbit Ion Cannon. It is an open source network stress testing application for DOS attack. It's written in C uh, sharp and it was initially developed by these blah 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 and all these things. So it was mostly used by uh, you can say as anonymous for going ahead and doing multiple attacks on people. It's quite easy easy i'll just go ahead and show it out to you i'll just uh, go ahead and download the binary zip file from over here you can download these files it will it's just like around 4 to 10 mb i don't know exactly uh what's total okay so i cannot go ahead and download that i believe uh my system is blocking me from downloading it no mind since we won't be actually doing any kind of dos attack on anyone else i will only be using the kali linux to going ahead and for going ahead and doing the attack on my own system i won't be needing that since LOIC is mostly used when uh, you want to go ahead and uh, do a DOS attack on anyone else's website or something. So we won't be doing a DOS attack on a website, we will only be doing that on a computer. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, let me show you how it looks like in exactly our images. So, okay, so this is how the LOIC software looks like. So as soon as you go and download it from the SourceForge website, just double click it, uh, it will start running and make sure that your antivirus is disabled because it will uh, most probably detect itself as malware. And you also have a LOIC application for in Google Play Store. Uh, let me check whether they have, they may have deleted that. Let me check, okay, here it is. Okay, I believe that Google Play Store has removed this from their web page. The reason being that it may be used as for malicious purposes, but you can still find these uh, applications out there. As you can see, we have over here uh, LOIC 5.0, and that is the latest one, I believe. And yes, that's the latest latest one since I have the same in my cell phone. So you can download it over from here. So when you go and if you go and use your, if you, uh, you must be having a good a uh, cell phone because you cannot do it from a cell phone which has like 512 MB RAM or 256 MB RAM. You need a good cell phone of minimum 1 GB RAM to go ahead and do that else your own cell phone uh, will, uh, will be hanged. That's why. So it looks like this. You can go ahead and enter the URL or the IP address of whichever computer or website you want to go ahead and start. Just click lock on and it, the target will be selected and just go ahead and select over here. It will be start flooding. Uh, and as soon as you can click start flooding, it will show stop flooding option and you can uh, go ahead and select the speed as well as to which you want to go ahead and actually attack and you can go ahead and use the port which port the person is actually using uh, for its website and the methods and threads depending upon the speed of your computer and everything it will go ahead and shut down the uh, computer or the website so these things were used and uh, yep uh, that's it for this tutorial guys and in the next tutorial I'll be teaching you as to why I was going ahead and teaching you all of these things and there are multiple ways of doing DDoS attack and uh, you most probably will not be able to save yourself from everything but I can surely go ahead and teach you as to how we can go ahead and uh, save ourselves from this kind of attack and in the next tutorial I'll be describing in detail as to what exactly happens in between the DDoS attack in practical and how it looks like exactly. Hey guys welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in the previous tutorial, we saw how exactly DDoS looks like and what is the basic concept behind that. So how you might be wondering how DDoS attacks are actually carried out. Basically, when you visit a website, you send them a request to deliver their content to you. 
when you send what you send is actually a packet basically it uh, takes more than just one packet you need a lot of them but still the bandwidth that you consume in requesting the server to send you some data is very little in return the data they send you is huge this takes up server resources for which they pay you for uh, which they pay for sorry and a legitimate view can easily earn more than the server cost on account of advertisement etc uh, so companies buy server that can provide enough data transfer for its regular users however if the number of users suddenly increases the server gives up it goes down and since the company knows it uh, it is under a ddos attack or ddos attack it just turns off the server so that it does not have to waste it monitor resources on a dos and wait till a dos stops now the modern computers and bandwidth uh, we can alone uh, we alone can easily pretend to be a thousand or even more us at once well this is not a good for the server it is not something that you can make it uh, happen your computer is not the only thing that gets better with time the servers do too however if a lot of people like us uh, to go ahead and like me or you go ahead and do a dos attack it becomes a distributed dos attack that is distributed denial of service attack or ddos this can easily be fatal for a server and it's just like you go to a page and start refreshing it very fast maybe a thousand times every second yeah it may be uh what you can say as a hyperbole that thousand times a second but yes that's exactly how ddos works and you're not the only one doing that there are thousands others that are doing the same thing that is just think of it that thousand users refreshing the page thousand times in a second and they are doing this uh, for minutes and hours just think what will happen to the company's server so basically you guys are equivalent to more than a million users using the sites simultaneously and that's not something the server can take sites like google and facebook have strong servers and algorithms that can easily identify a dos and block the traffic from that ip address and the ip address itself but it's not just that the websites that get better and the black hat hackers too are improving day by day this leaves a huge scope for understanding the ddos attack and becoming an asset to one of these sites the good the bad and the ugly so you might be wondering that uh, what exactly or is the major difference between ddos attack and ddos attack uh, a ddos attack is denial of service attack this means that one computer and one internet connection is used to flood a server with packets that is either tcp or the udp packets that uh, use the datagram protocol the point of such a denial of service attack is to overload the target server bandwidth and other resources this will make the server inaccessible to others thereby blocking the website or whatever else is hosted there a ddos attack on the other hand in most respect it is similar to a ddos attack but results are much much different instead of one computer and one internet connection to the ddos attack you use utilizes many computers and many connections the computers behind such an attack are often distributed and around the whole world and will be a part of what is known as a botnet the main difference between a ddos attack versus a dos attack therefore is that the target server will overload by hundreds or even thousands of requests in the case of former that is the dos attack as opposed to the ddos attack of just one attacker in the case of the latter therefore it is much much or you can say it is impossible to withstand a ddos attack as opposed to a normal dos attack the reason for that is because if it is a dos attack from one particular ip address then you may go ahead and uh, block the ip address for a specific period of time or for uh, lots of period of time but uh let's assume that there are thousands of users all around the world you cannot go ahead and bl uh, keep blocking each and every other person because uh let's say for example i myself have uh, three laptops at my home and two cell phones so if i go ahead and you do a distributed denial of service attack they can block five or ten or maybe let's say 50 at a time but blocking uh so just assume that if a person has two computers at his home or if he can just go to the cyber ca cyber cafe by using just going two dollars five dollars or maybe 10 rupees 15 rupees for an hour that would be more than sufficient for, for them to go ahead and kill a server or make them down and it's much harder or i can say it is impossible to go ahead and catch the people who actually did ddos attack the reason being that there are multiple ip addresses and you cannot actually assume whether it's a ddos attack actually or a number of people are trying to log in on your website at the same time so it can be either of them that so it's not necessary that uh, all the people are actually going ahead and uh, using your uh, or using their uh, denial of service attack uh, to go ahead and uh, attack you it can be like let's say for example uh, i'll take an example of our irc irctc website that's an indian website for 
uh, railway, railway ticket booking and air ticket booking. So most of the time during April when people get a lot of holidays, uh, you will see that the time uh, that the website is extremely slow or it will show you that it's under maintenance. The reason for that is because first of all, there are people booking lots of tickets. Second thing, there are people who are continuously viewing whether their tickets are, are booked or they are still waiting. And the third thing are that there are people in cyber cafes or other people or travelers who actually go ahead and sit on the website for no reason just so that they could block the other traffic and other people can go then go ahead and tell them the reason only reason was that because these people cannot get a booking on the railway the reason being that the site was slow so they go to these people who are already locked in and they give him some kind of extra fee like around uh, 50 rupees 100 or 200 rupees uh, extra so that uh, their tickets get booked and that it does not go on waiting so at that point of time even the websites get down a lot a lot of time the reason being that multiple people are using it so you cannot actually go and distinguish between a distributed denial of service attack or just normal people using it at the same point of time. That's the reason it's most likely unable to stop and unable to detect or sometimes it is able to detect but it cannot uh, stop and that's why the people have to shut down their server. So yeah, that's the whole concept behind the DDoS attack and that is it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll be teaching you about the different levels of attack, the OSI models and stuff. Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in the previous tutorial, we took a look at different things as to how we can actually go ahead and carry out different types of attacks. Uh, so in this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at the different types of or different levels of attacks and the levels of attacks can be at network level, operating system level, application level, data flood and protocol feature attacks. So Routers, IP switches, firewalls, these attempts to exhaust hardware resources using multiple duplicate packets or software bug are uh, called as different levels of attacks. The equipment vendor, vendor OSS, end user equipment. Uh, in this part, the attacker, he takes advantage of the way operating and implements, he implements their own protocols. Then we have finger bombing, it's an attack a service uh, or machine by using the application attack to exhaust resources. There are different type of attacks, again known as host computer or network. It's an attack in which massive quantities of data are sent to the target with the integration of uh, intention of using a bandwidth and processing resources. Then we have server, client, PC and DNS servers. Attacks in uh, which uh, bugs in a network protocol are utilized to take down different networks uh, resources and the methods of attack includes IP addresses, spoofing and corrupting DNS server caches as well. So, the tendency of DOS attack shows infallibility that uh, perpetrators take to aim and move up the OSI model uh, over time. The re relocation of the prime target is logical since more DDoS defense systems focus their primary detection powers on lower layers. Therefore, attacks on the web application layer are increasingly popular. Furthermore, layer 7 penetration that is a top level o uh, layer of the OSI model, it provides an outlet on a business logic layer which is considered as an abstraction uh, extension of the previously mentioned network protocol suit. So given that the internet is built vertically by multi multiple protocol layers, it would be perfectly understandable if internet DDoS attacks assume vertical classification as well. While network layers uh, DDoS attack attempts to overwhelm the victim server with bogus requests, the application layer DDoS attacks rely on legitimate ones. Such as, let's say for example, the Beitulahi and Deconic uh, in 2011. In layer 7 attacks, DDoS attacks, attacking computers uh, have to set up a full TCP connection. This while providing uh, genuine IP addresses is something you cannot dispense with. The entire action proceeding may seem legitimate in the absence of traffic spikes, but it may not also at the same time. They may uh, virtually swindle even a vigilant DDoS mechanism and they are stealthy, trust me. Uh, it is one of the most famous attacks known as Manthena 2000 in 2011. So a layer 7 DDoS attack in contrast to the others may exploit vulnerabilities in application software thus circumventing detection and aiming directly at the targeted server as it was used in Manthena 2000 in 2011. In other words, they are more sophisticated since they do not count entirely on a brute force to achieve desired ends. Perhaps the most notable difference, so-called volumetric DDoS attacks strive to bring down network infrastructures and servers by employing high bandwidth consuming flooding. That benefits from an inherent blind spot of the internet medium. On the other hand, 
Layer 7 DDoS attacks take the victim server in the rear, first encouraging well-known applications such as Hypertext Transfer Protocol, Voice Over Internet Protocol (VoIP), or DNS such as that is a domain name system. The goal of application layer DDoS attacks usually have nothing to do with overwhelming bandwidth. Some IT experts call them low and slow for a reason. Frequently at a close range are exhausted CPU or memory resources. Hence layer 7 DDoS leverage as well inherent flaws and limitations of applications. For example, system resources are always finite. They are not never infinite. The surprise here actually that heavy resource consumption will eventually render the server incapacitated. So protection and mitigation of common volumetric attacks is something that IT specialists are familiar with and in contrast layer 7 DDoS attacks often stand as a more formidable challenge. So in, in short to be more clearer, it's very hard for uh, people to go out and actually stop these kinds of DDoS attacks. They are not something that uh, a person can already know what is happening in the background. Uh, because uh, and you may never know for example let's say if a person is trying to go ahead and interfere with your firewall then you may get an alarm at your IDS that someone is trying to enter your firewall if you have a good IDS that's intrusion detection system but uh, when uh, going ahead and doing a DDoS attack you, can, you may never know if the, whether the person is actually going and trying to uh, get into your computer or is actually just uh, normally visiting the website uh, within multiple IP addresses or through multiple IP addresses which you are getting a lot of traffic. You may also have noticed that let's say for example if you are going ahead and using your Google and if on a company on your own let's say for example you are working in a company and uh, you are trying to visit your Google website. Sometimes you are requested to go ahead and enter some specific letters or uh, some ad addition or multiplication of a few uh, easy mathematics. The reason of behind that is because the people want to know what exactly is the IP address and from where is the source coming. Whether it's just a DDoS attack because if it is a DDoS attack then uh, they won't DDoS attack cannot go ahead and um, ans uh, answer the uh, to the question of 6 plus 6 or 2 plus 2. Uh, they cannot go ahead and write down uh, something in specific and at that point of time the computer will know that okay the, we are getting a DDoS attack and that's why we cannot sustain that and they will go ahead and straightly ban the user but there are also ways as to how you can go ahead and avoid that there are people who have written botnets that can that are so smart that they can go ahead and easily answer what exactly it is let's say for example you can take a look at uh, I'll go ahead and show you a famous app which is in the Google Glasses So here is the Google Goggles, not Glass actually. So uh, you may be knowing about Google Glass that you just have to go ahead and use uh, your camera to go ahead and let's say for example if I go ahead and use my camera to take a picture of this page. So it will uh, check that uh, the, the uh, things that are written over here are Google Goggles and it will straight away go ahead and select, uh, uh, search about Google go Goggles on the uh, internet. Or if I go ahead and uh, let's say for example. Uh, Okay, great. So we have a movie over here with the name of ABCD. So if I go and click a, a picture of uh, this specific uh, area, only this area, just okay, only this area uh, specific, it will go ahead and uh, scan the image for letters and it will go ahead and search on the internet. So people have developed such kind of application that can actually detect uh, letters from images. That is the ones that we get as 4 plus 4 or 2 plus 2 that is called as a robot uh, scanning or something like that. And the bots can actually go ahead and answer these things. And uh, people cannot actually go ahead and again the servers cannot go ahead and identify whether it's actually a DDoS attack or just a normal user trying to access and uh, he's answering the question and the computer may again be at fault. So uh, that's the reason I was telling you that you cannot go ahead and actually protect your computers against uh, DDoS attacks but you can actually go ahead and try to prevent that and that is what we would be looking at the next tutorial. So that's it for this tutorial and just go ahead and DDoS someone else but just be under the legal limits guys. Hey guys welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in the previous tutorials we took a look as to how we can go ahead and what are different types of attack, what are the different layers of attack and how people normally go ahead and DDoS a particular computer or a system or a network. 
So in this tutorial, I'll be teaching you uh, about how we can go to identify the DDoS attacks and prevent ourselves from them. And yes, a DDoS attack is not only done on a Wi-Fi on a uh, wireless network, not exactly wireless. The proper term would be that DDoS attacks are not only done over the internet through on a wired connection or on a web website only it's also done on a computer or wi-fi network to go ahead and crash the wi-fi network and uh, let it reboot again so that uh, the password may get disrupted and the person will then have access to the network so if you run your own servers then you need to be able to identify when you are under attack that's because the sooner you can establish that problems with your website did you attack the sooner you can try to do something about it to be in a position to do this, it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with the typical inbound traffic profile. Now that means you need to know from where exactly the traffic is coming in. It is a, is it the common way from where all uh, always the traffic comes in, or is it coming on the same port from where you normally use, uh, which you normally use it? Let's say for example, you don't always need to go ahead and use the same port like 120 or 140 or 150, whichever you're using. You can use any like, normal number of port like such as. 2137 or any random number never use the same numbers for the port such as 2222 or 3333 because it's quite easy for the attackers to guess that and actually go ahead and attack you so the more you know about what your normal traffic looks like the easier it is to spot on whether it's an attack or it's just a normal profile trying to access some random stuff so most DDoS attacks start as sharp uh, spikes in traffic and helps to be able to tell the difference between a search, a sudden surge of legitimate visitors and the start of a DDoS attack. So, and it's also a good idea to nominate a DDoS leader in your company who is responsible for acting uh, uh, that in case you are under attack. And there should always be over provision bandwidth with your company. It generally makes sense to have more bandwidth available to your web server than you ever think you are likely to need. And that way you can accommodate sudden and unexpected surges in the traffic that could be a result of an advertising campaign or any random stuff and a special offer or even a mention of your company in the media would be would suffice that even if you over provision the traffic by 100 percent or let's say by 500 percent let's say you need approximately of 10 gb uh, per month but you go ahead and uh, you, uh, get an over provision of approximately 50 gb every month that uh, likely won't stop a DDoS attack but it may give you a few extra minutes to act before your resources are overwhelmed so you need to make sure that you already have a backup uh, of something in case uh, something goes wrong on your website or someone is actually trying to DDoS or hack into your website and you need to make sure that they also work offline not just online or they have some kind of internet speciality that even if uh, a system goes offline you will still be able to work offline even without uh, that specific web page so that it does not harness your productivity there are a few technical measures that can be uh, taken to go ahead and run from that attack actually especially in the first few minutes and some of these are quite simple for example you can rate limit your router to prevent your uh, web server being overwhelmed and filters to tell you whether your router to drop the packets from obvious source of attack or time out them half open connections more aggressively you can also drop spoofed or malformed packages which are set lower such as sin icmp and udp flood drop thresholds but the truth is that while these steps have been effective in the past DDoS attacks are now usually too large for these measures to have any significant effect again the most you can hope for is they will buy a little time as an attack ramps up as the attack ramps up and finally you can go ahead and always call your isp or the hosting provider and the next step is to go ahead and call your is provider or host provider if you do not host your own web server Tell them that you are under attack and ask for help. Keep emergency contacts for your ISP or hosting provider readily available so that you can use this very quickly. Depending on the strength of attack, the ISP or the hoster may already have detected it or they may themselves start to be overwhelmed by the attack as well. In case uh, the person is actually quite strong who is actually doing the DDoS attack, is attacking you as well as the ISP provider also. So you stand a better chance of um, with, uh, withstanding the DDoS attack if your web server is located in a hosting center rather than if you run it yourself. That's because its data center will likely have fair high capacity bandwidth links and higher capacity routers than your uh, company has itself. And its staff will probably uh, have more experience dealing with the attacks. 
having your web server located with a hoster will also keep DDoS traffic aimed at your web server of the uh, corporate LAN. So at least that part of your business including email and possibly voice over IP addresses, VOIP services should operate normally during an attack as well. And if attack is large enough, the first thing a hosting company or ISP is likely to do is null uh, route your traffic which results in packets destined for your web server being dropped before they arrive. And it can be very costly for a hosting company to allow a DDoS attack onto their network because it consumes a lot of bandwidth and it can affect other consumers. So the first thing we might say is uh, it's a black hole for a while. It is a most famous term used by Liam uh, and Tignap, a network operating engineers at Peer One Hosting. And uh, there's also a, a managing director of ISP and hosting that is Tim Pat, Deficit Service Providers, agrees that the first thing that we need to do when we see a customer under attack is log on to our routers and stop the traffic getting on to our network. He says because that takes about two minutes to propagate globally using border gateway protocol and then the traffic falls off. So if that was the end of the story then the DDoS attack would be successful uh, to get the website back online with your ISP or hosting company may direct your traffic or divert your traffic to a scrubber when the malicious packets can be removed before the legitimate ones are sent to on your web browser. So we use our experience and various tools to understand how the traffic to our website uh, has changed from what it was seeing before and to identify the malicious packets. And uh, there's also a famous quote uh, said by the guy at Pier1 that has uh, it has the capacity to take in, scrub and send on very high levels of packets of traffic as much as 20 Gbps. But with the levels of traffic comparable to those experienced by spammers, even the uh, scrubbing effort would likely be overwhelmed. So uh, do have a DDoS play, a plan uh, or prevention plan in place with your ISP or a hoster so that it can be prevent or begin mitigation or divert your traffic into a mitigation specialist with the minimum delivery delay. And lastly we have our own legal use of DDoS attack. The people, the government uses DDoS attack to go ahead and target another companies or another, uh, not actually companies, other country server to go ahead and gather information or a national being a national spy agency or something. And uh, it's also used to go ahead and stress in stress testing whether to see whether how much capacity your server is, has before it goes down or how much can it take before it actually shuts down and crashes the whole thing. It's also used to know exactly whether the company, uh, whether the uh, website or uh, the server can withstand such amount of traffic or uh, even after traffic, if, if they are somehow able to restore, what are the uh, ways that they can go and restore and how can, how much can they actually protect the system after it has been restored, whether uh, the firewall is down after the DDoS attack or it can go and lead to some kind of uh, privacy problem because if uh, the website is down and the people can easily get access into that, then anyone can go and distribute or leak any kind of data that you have in the system. That is why. So these are different types of attacks that can be done and these are different ways that can be used to go ahead and stop or use a DDoS, DDoS attack for your own purposes. And that is it for this tutorial and that would be end for the PowerPoint presentation for these tutorials and the next tutorial I'll be teaching you more about actually doing a DDoS attack in a Windows 7 or a Windows 2008 server and I'll be showing you multiple ways as to how we can go ahead and do that and I'll be looking at that in the next tutorial. Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in the previous tutorials, uh, we uh, saw lots of things as to what exactly a DDoS attack. I gave you two different scenarios of one of the bus and other of the multiplayer online game of swimming pool as to what exactly DDoS attacks are, how they can be performed and I also showed you different ways as to how we can go ahead and stop them. But there's nothing much when a person already has much we can do in case of DDoS attacks. And the second thing is that if the person who is actually DOSing your machine if you already has access to a computer, there's no way to prevent that until unless you are Julian Assange or Kevin Mitnick or uh, David Kennedy. 
and these are the uh, most dangerous hackers of all time the only way you could go ahead and save your data was to will be to just go ahead and disconnect your computer or the wire or cable connection from your computer and stop your computer from actually uh let's say overloading itself or the machines and just one thing that if uh, the person who's actually tossing your machine if he has good amount of uh, pro uh, knowledge in programming and electrical programming uh, that is the hardware programming then he can even uh, write software that could dos your hardware's that could actually go ahead and uh, let's say overload your the power or the voltage to your hardware uh, uh, hardware inside your system and it can even go ahead for it also your hardware which may not even start anytime soon it seems scary it is scary and there's no way to prevent it but uh, the only thing that you can do to go and prevent yourself would be to stay vigilant all the times so now coming back to our point of cal linux we will go ahead and check as to how we can go ahead and uh, how we can go ahead and actually do some kind of different attacks so we can either attack a server or a website uh, or even a computer so today uh, as i don't have a website that i can go ahead and dos to or else i would go to jail if i go ahead and uh, do dos some random uh, website i cannot do that but i would be showing you as to how we can go ahead and do that in multiple ways the first thing would be that uh, i will assume that we already have access to the person's computer and uh, if i already had that and i quickly want to do a dos attack the computer uh, i cannot actually go ahead and let's say uh, wait uh, or take my own time, sweet time to go ahead and dos a computer since it would take quite a time to go ahead and uh, let's say uh, send multiple packets to computer it will take at the minimum of approximately 3 to 4 minutes for me to do that so what i could do is i can go ahead and write down a script in specific i'll show you as to how i can go ahead and do that so i wrote this script previously and it was it was in batch format so i wrote this script previously and i'll I explain this to us to how exactly this works this is that um uh, that means a go ahead and start a command prompt in a bash uh, then start it then i can go back to it so this will keep on looping itself till till forever because there's no stop to it even you cannot go ahead and close no matter what you do no matter what kind of antivirus you have or no matter what you do it will not stop uh until uh, yeah there's no way to stop it even if you have like 8 gb of ram it will keep on continuing and because i'll show you i'll just go ahead and start my task manager at the same point of time and i'll show you that how exactly this process keep on multiplying itself and there's no way to stop it and so this is one way as to ddos a computer this is not actually dosing your computer uh in a professional manner but this is how you can do if you don't have any time this is the newbiest way that uh, a person can do uh, let's say for example you already have a interpreter prompt with you i'll just go ahead and start my cal linux at the same time uh, okay yes so uh, if you have access to the computer's machine then you can go ahead and open the command prompt and uh, or you can go ahead and simply transfer the batch file from your linux computer to windows 7 over here and start the batch file uh, but the computer uh, but the person who is actually on the computer can see that the batch file is running so uh, he may or may not be able to go ahead and stop the service at that point of time and again i'm saying he may not be able to because most of the time he will not be able to but he, he if he is something like uh, uh, the uh, robert downey Jr. from the iron man or tony stark uh, or multi uh, let's say to be he has an extremely strong computer let's say like 32 gb of ram so this will take lots of time and i'll show you exactly how this works before i go ahead and uh, explain this to you as to how this works i double click it click it and see as you can see i cannot even right click to my computer and my computer has gone for a toss and there's no way i can stop it as far as i i know no matter what you do i have to i will have to forcefully close this and So this is one way of doing that. Just go ahead and plug out the power if you are, and it will work. But that's the only way that you can do that. So if you have already access to your machine, uh, that you have already gained access to your target computer, you can simply transfer this file which you already have written in Kali Linux. Just transfer this batch file to Windows and run it. Uh, but the person will know that this is running and he may able to do something. That is one thing. There's also one more method. There are two different methods that we can go ahead and use uh, to actually attack the person without him knowing that. And I'll just go. and start my kali linux the other way is that we uh, instead of going ahead and opening a reverse uh, meter reader or you can also do that just go ahead and open a shell prompt and run this uh, simple uh, prompt uh, via uh, kali linux through the command prompt which is which would be invisible to the user at that point of time his computer will suddenly hang in between and it won't uh, work actually so i'll go ahead and show you as to how exactly it will look like so i'll just go ahead and quickly create a payload over here and i'll just copy 
the uh this batch file or i'll just assume that uh okay i'll just first create this payload and transfer it over here and social engineering toolkit mass may load and i'll just go down this is my ip address we can use either the windows tcp shell re uh, reverse attacker which will create a command shell or you can go ahead and use a meterpreter i would normally use a meterpreter the reason being that i uh, what i could do is i can go ahead and uh, use anything that i want or gain all the system files to my computer gain access to all of those things and after i have all the files that i need i will go ahead and crash the computer so this file will be created and i'll just go ahead and stop my defender for the time being Is it updating? Okay, perfect. So my defender is off. Perfect. And I believe my virus has been created and I'll start the listener over here. And let me check my payload. It is in the SET home directory. So while the MSF console starts, it will take quite a time. I'll just go to the root and CT and okay this is not the one I was looking for probably just uh, just go back to my root folder file system user share set okay it's taking quite a while share Okay, we have the SCT and here we have our payload file. So I'll just copy it and paste it over here. Okay. Okay. I'll just turn this off and I'll just uh, make Cal Linux. Okay. Um, the okay i should be able to copy that payload file over here perfect and i'll just cut it and paste it over here so i'll just assume that you have sent this file uh, somehow to your attacker and he has accepted it i'll just go ahead and start it the payload and my connection over here will be started session hyphen l Okay, it should be sessions hyphen L, sorry, sessions hyphen I hyphen one. I have a meter printer, so I'll just go ahead and open the shell prompt and I am on desktop. So I would do is that I want to go ahead and run this file test.bat. So I'll just go ahead and type it over here. So I'll just type uh, I don't know exactly how it does test period BAT I believe and yep the file has started and as you can see uh, it's again gone into a big loop and the person will not even know so this is one way of actually going ahead and doing that again I'll just force close this and I'll open it once more as you can see that this file is not yet corrupted the reason being that it is on desktop and I purposely did that but if this file was in system uh, windows uh, system32 folder and you actually link this to some of the system32 files by a bit simpler simpler coding and uh, then you can actually go ahead and destroy the system files and the person will not be even be able to recover all those things I'll just go ahead and stop this background channel no and I'm back to my original place So this is one way of doing going ahead and attacking the Cal Linux. I'll go ahead and temporarily delete that because I don't want to accidentally do that once more and this as well. Okay, so that is it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll teach you how we can go ahead and DOS this machine and without actually the person knowing that I have executed something. So that's it for this tutorial and let's go ahead and take a look at next tutorial as to how we can actually DOS a person without actually running something on his computer.
Welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing and this would be my last tutorial for the DDoS attacks and before we move on to the client side application hacks I want to do at least one more operating system hack and vulnerabilities still exist in the uh, new operating system but they're becoming more rare and rarer. In the previous tutorials I taught you as to how I can go ahead and do a DDoS attack uh, after I have access to the person's computer. But in this tutorial it would be something different. I won't be running any application from his computer or I won't be uh, first accessing his computer or ev even not accessing his computer. I will not even access his computer at the very beginning. So uh, Windows 7 was released uh, like a lot of time before but still there are people who actually use that. I don't know for why because Windows 8 has much more security but again it has its own different weird kind of bugs which will again irritate a person and the person will be so irritated that he will go back to using Windows uh, XP. Uh, so uh, it may be a hyperbole or something but that's how Windows uh, works. So I would anytime prefer a Linux system but even Linux has its own bugs and at least in Windows you can at least solve a bug but in uh, Linux it does not have that amount of bugs uh, but it is uh, 10 times quicker and it's uh, almost like uh, most of the time it is impossible to hack until unless it is the user's fault uh, through social engineering and uh, Linux is almost vulnerable to most of the kinds of attacks until as the person is extremely uh, intelligent and uh, he tries to go ahead and find some bugs in the kernels and tries to inject his virus in so inside that and that also through the source file that is through the source website which is again almost like uh, nearly impossible to do but not impossible so uh, besides the Linux talk in this hack I will take advantage of the flaw in the Windows 7 and the Windows Server 2000 operating system that will create an infinite loop and crash the system although this is not nearly as much fun as owning the system it can be very destructive to an institution that relies upon this system to run their organization and as you can see most of the operating system or even uh, I'll just go ahead and show you the Microsoft website uh, the uh, you can go ahead and use the, uh, uh, the techniques such as the DNS one which I told you, uh, taught you in the previous tutorials uh, in these uh, uh, different uh, tools through which I can go ahead and actually uh, gather the information as to which which server Windows server is the person actually using whether it's 2008, 2003 or 2012 and if you go and check most of the uh, people will normally use the 2008 server because it is very user friendly but at the same time it has its own vulnerabilities. So uh, it can be very destructive to this organization uh, without them knowing that how actually system works they directly go ahead and implement that. So enough talk let's get started fire up our Metasploit and let's hack. So if you're new to Metasploit then check out my previous tutorials as to how you can go ahead and do these kind of attacks and pass them some hacks. So little background material. Uh, remember that Metasploit has different types of modules, exploits, payloads, auxiliaries, encoders, NOPs and posts. So in this hack I will use the auxiliary module to attack the Windows 7 and the Windows Server uh, 2008 based system SMBs. So just go ahead and start up the fire up the MSF console by typing MSF console and wait for around two to three minutes or maybe five if you have a slower system okay so we have our metasploit started and if you got these same things access security permission denied then uh, it's, this is just for um, you can see it's a kind of a troll that uh, metasploit has written so if you're new to metasploit and you see, see these things then don't worry about that because uh, this is just for fun and um, uh, that Metasploit has created so that it could go ahead and troll new noobs or new users. So just don't worry about that and ignore. And as you can see we have 1389 exploits, 788 auxiliary, 356 payloads and 37 encoders, no 8 knobs and 223 posts over here. And when I say post it is not our Facebook post, it is the post exploit uh, that we would use after going ahead and hacking into a PC. So let's go ahead and start our exploit by typing use auxiliary uh, I used this module when I was using backtrack I don't exactly know whether this still works on uh, our Cal Linux but still go ahead and try to use that auxiliary windows smb slash ms10 underscore negotiate I believe uh, and I'll just type I think that this was underscore loop Let's check if we have this module or if this has been. Okay, I believe uh, this has been deleted. And let's check. Okay, so we have all these things. 
and we wanted the Windows SMB. So let's check. We have the SMB exploit and we want the MS10. I believe MS10 was removed. We want more. Let's check the SMB09. Yeah, we have the SMB10 uh, negotiate response loop. Perfect. So we will be using this module. And the only thing about it was I just written 006 over here. And I'll type control C and I'll use. Uh, uh, I'll just go and delete this. I'll paste it over here. Perfect. So, and now I'll go ahead and type show options. And okay, S should be smaller. So, as you can see, that we had these are the SRV host, SRV port, SSL. That would be the false since we are negotiating SSL for incoming connections. And this would be the path for a custom SSL certificate. So, now I'll type the auxiliary actually module uh, that we have used. And then we will click show options. So, now we will be setting the SRV host. So, uh, and we will type the SRV host by going ahead and typing SET. And let's say. So we will be using the SRV, we will be setting up the SRV host that is our computer. So I'll just type ifconfig and this is my IP address. In your case, it would be different. So I'll just type set in capital. Make sure that you write it exactly as it is or you can just copy paste it from over to here. Set SRV host and just type paste and hit enter. We have set our SRV host. Now we need to go ahead and set our, um, so not X, okay. So yeah, perfect. Now, since we have our SRV host, now we need to go ahead and use the run. And in the last step, we will run our auxiliary modules before we go ahead and uh, actually execute these things. So uh, everything would be uh, different. So uh, uh, now this would be the last step uh, that I would be doing is that and we will run the auxiliary module and once the auxiliary module executes, it generates a shared folder link which then you can go ahead and send to the target machine and in this case, uh, the link would be something different. So I'll just type run over here. I don't remember exactly. Run should be in capital or small. I'll just go ahead and run. Okay, perfect. It is running and uh, trigger the vulnerable client to try to access shared anything and so what I would do is that I'll just go ahead and copy this and I'll go to this website over here. I can go ahead and run this by going ahead and typing it over here. Most probably I should be able to. Let's see if I am able to. As you can see my computer has become a bit slow. It will probably hang itself. Perfect. So what I actually did was that uh, as you can see if you go ahead and run this computer it will not run. It will just go ahead and stop. So uh yes that's a bit confusing so uh, what i did was that i should uh, go ahead and send this specific thing to my target computer and as soon as he clicks this specific uh link i can go ahead and send him something like to make it look more safe i can go ahead and send him some kind of web page or i can say oh my god look at this specific image or something through email or through facebook or something else but as soon as he clicks this thing this computer is hanged. As you can see, I cannot go ahead and type anything or I cannot go ahead and run anything from over here. I'll just try to control plus control alt and then my uh, mouse will be released. If I click over here, it's hanged. I cannot do anything. So, in fact, I have DDoSed my Windows 7. If you're a bit confused, I'll explain this to you once more. I created this. This is a SMB loop over here. As you can see, I used this specific payload uh, to go ahead and hack, attack this computer. And then I went ahead and created this specific uh, link. So I just needed to go ahead and send this specific link to our target. Uh, and as soon as he clicked this link or ran this screen through the browser or through run or through any other thing, this computer will freeze and it will not move or nothing will happen in his computer. As you can see, not even the numlock option will be running. So yes, that is it for this tutorial. You can just go ahead and uh, send any random links to the person's computer and he will be able to, uh, uh, he will just crash his own computer by himself and he won't even come to know what exactly happened. So that's it guys for this tutorial and that would be the last tutorial for the DDO sync of a computer or through Cal Linux or for the DDoS. In the next tutorial, we will be taking a look at how we can go ahead and actually uh, hack into an Android system but as I don't have an Android uh, with me right now I'll be just showing you as to how we can do that I won't be actually able to perform an Android attack so that's it guys for this tutorial see you next time